Hey guys, welcome to another overclocking tutorial. This time with the uh, Asus Maximus 6 Extreme uh, Z87 chipset. Actually, one of my favorite overclocking motherboards. And yeah, I just entered the BIOS by pressing the delete key. This time I'm using a uh, Core i5-4670K CPU, which has a stock clock of 3.4 GHz and a turbo clock of 3.8. If you go to main, you can see all the details. I'm using quite new BIOS version 1505. And again, here you can see the CPU, 3.4 GHz stock clock. And you can also see I'm using 8 GB of memory, DDR3, 4 GB per stick, and currently running at 1600 MHz. So the first thing to do would be to go to the Extreme Tweaker. And here we go to the AI Overclock Tuner and set this one from Auto to XMP to load the extreme memory profile of the, your memory sticks. So you can see the memory is now going from 1600 MHz to around 2400, which is the rated clock, and also the latency of C10, and the voltages of 1.65 for the memory and 1.25 for the system agent. Okay, that's about it for the memory. There's nothing else you have to do. So now we already move on to the CPU. Go to CPU core ratio. This has to be set to sync all cores. Sync all cores will force the CPU to clock all the cores at the, at the same level. So now we set this one to 43. And if you scroll back up, you can see the target CPU tuber speed mode of 4300 MHz and we will have the same speed on all cores all the time. That's an improvement of about 500 uh, considering the turbo clock and almost 1 GHz if you consider the stock clock of 3.4 GHz. So the next step is to change the minimum CPU cache ratio. This one has a stock value of 38 and we will also set this one to 38. The cache is the, con the connection between the cores, the CPU cache, the system agent and your normal memory. I don't want to go too deep into details but raising this one will give you a little bit of more performance but the risk of instability is very high so I recommend to leave this one on 38, it will be totally fine. Scroll down. Because we use the XMP profile there's no need to change any memory settings. This is perfectly fine at 2400. Also the DRAM uh, timing control, if you enter here you can see uh, the memory is totally fine at C10, 12, 12, 31, 2. Also the correct values from the XMP, so we can go back, nothing to change here. And we go to the voltage control. Make sure the fully manual mode is enabled, so we have the full voltage control. You can see my CPU core voltage stock is around 0.944 volt, and we will push this one to around 1.25. 1.25 is, let's say, it's it's quite average for 4.3 gigahertz, and it should work on 90% of the CPUs. If you have any trouble and it doesn't work for you, just comment on the video. I will I will help you and get the the right settings for you. But this should work for, for most of the systems. So, the CPU cache voltage set is 1.125. Uh, 1.15. Okay, you can leave the rest on auto. Those are mainly for the memory. No need to touch them. And the initial CPU input voltage is around 1.7 for my CPU, but we will set this one to 1.8 and also the eventual 1.8. DRAM voltage is already set by the XMP, so nothing to do here, also fine. The last thing to do is to go to main, so we go right, advanced, CPU configuration, scroll down, go to the CPU power, man conf power management configuration and disable EIST, also called Intel Speed Step, so, and the CPU C states. If we disable those two, the CPU will always stay at 4.3 GHz and we will always have the maximum performance, which is what we want. Okay, the last thing we could do is going to go to uh, to Tools on, and go to ASUS Overclocking Profile, and you can see I already have some settings here, but Let's go, let's, let's save this profile and call it um, 4300 megahertz and save this one to profile 8 just in, just in case and hit F10 and apply and go to Windows. Ok, 
Okay, as you can see, I successfully boot into Windows. First of all, please download those three tools, Prime95, CPU-Z and CoreTemp. CoreTemp will show you all the temperatures of your CPU and also some basic details. You can also see the CPU here, socket frequency, and most important, the temperatures of the cores. CPU-Z will show you the details of your system. You can see the Core i5 for 670K. You can see the core voltage around 1.25 and also the core speed around 4.3 GHz. If you go to mainboard, you can see we're using the Maximus 6, 6 Extreme mainboard and the memory shows 8 GB DDR3 running in dual channel at 3.8 GHz cache frequency, which we said earlier in the BIOS and also 2400 MHz on the memory. It only shows 1200 because of DDR, which means double data rate. So next step is Prime95. Go to custom, set this one to 1344, 1344 here, and check run FTTs in place. I also put a link in the description about how to use Prime95 if you wanna know more about it. But basically that's what you need to test the stability and now hit OK. You can see the, the temperature jumping up and also you can see that this clock is stable. If you do right click here, you can see all the cores are running at the same frequency. OK, so you have to keep this test running for about one hour. If it passes, you can just go on and game and yeah, well basically if, if it's stable like this and not exceeding let's say 90, 92 degrees, it's fine. You can, you can just keep the settings. If it crashes, and you still have room in the temperature, you can increase the core voltage. If it crashes and you have no room anymore in the, in the temperature, you have to lower the clock speed to let's say 42 or 41. Okay, so that's about it. If you need help, just let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.